Hello guys, welcome to the part 3 of RMI. In this, we'll see the actual implementation of RMI. Now see, uh, we have in th the second part, we have talked about the steps. Now we'll implement the steps one by one. So for that, the first step, we have to create a remote interface, right? So for that, we'll open a new notepad file. Uh -oh. We have to open a notepad file, not paint. Okay. In this notepad, notepad file, we have to create the implementation, right? Oh, sorry, we have to create an interface. For that, the first step is you have to create an interface. So we'll say public interface. Uh, we'll say this as add. Now we'll be going for the add application in which we'll be having uh, add server, which will add two numbers. For that, we'll say this is my add interface. In this add interface, we'll be having a method called as public int. So we'll say we'll have a public, it will return me an int value. Uh, the method name will be add. It will ask you for two parameters, int x and int y. That's it. So this is your interface. But we don't want to create a normal interface. We have to create a remote interface, right? Again, okay, in interface, yeah. Uh, so we have to create a remote interface. And for that, to make it a remote interface, we have to extend it with a remote interface. So when you extend it, this interface, add i with remote interface, by default, this add i becomes a remote interface, uh, the concept of inheritance. Now, since we are we are extending this uh, uh, interface remote, <coughs> excuse me, yeah, we have uh, we are extending this uh, remote interface. What we have to do is we have to import the package as Java dot RMI dot star. Uh, again, we can just write here uh, a remote to make it more efficient. So this the package name is Java dot RMI. Since we are working with a remote in, uh, implementation, there are chances that we will be getting an error. So that's why we have to say this throws the exception so that it will handle the exception. Okay, and that is your, this is how you have to create a interface, right? Let's save this interface. We'll create a package here in my folder. We'll say new folder as RMI. Okay, they will name this as RMI folder. And here I will store this with add i dot java. Okay. Now the next step we have to go for is we have to create the implementation. So in order to create the implementation, uh, we have to create a class. So we'll say we'll create a new file now, not new notepad file. And this, this is responsible to implement the interface. And we'll name this as add c. This is the class of your interface, right? So we'll say add c. A name doesn't matter, you can have any name. So we'll say add c. And let's see how we have to implement this. First thing is we have to create a class because we are implementing the interface. And we'll name this as add c. Now this class need to implement that remote interface and that is your add, add i, right? Then what next? Uh, we have to, uh, we will say public int add this is your implementation it will take two parameters int x and int y and this need to return uh, this will return uh, x plus y so this will return x plus y now the the thing is uh, whenever you work with this uh, add c see ultimately we have to if you if you see this uh, steps we have to create stub and skeleton of, the, uh, of this from this add c to make it happen we have to extend this class with unicast remote object so this will be remote unicast remote object so that you will get the features of remote object here now since we are extending this class with unicast remote object we have to import the package and that package is your Java dot RMI dot server dot star. Right, so this this class Unicode remote object belongs to us a package called as server. Now the thing is there are chances that we'll be getting errors for this unicast remote object. Now as a class add C we can handle the exceptions, right? But we have to we have to implement this this uh, we have to handle the exception of this remote unicast remote object and to do that we'll, we'll define a constructor add c 
We'll define this at C. Okay, this is your constructor now. And to handle the exception by a unicast remote object, what we can do is we can say throws exception. Okay, and we'll call the uh, the constructor of this unicast remote object with the help of a method called a super. So how it works, when you create object of this add C now, it will call this add C constructor. It indirectly will call super, which will handle the exception called the throws exception, right? So ultimately, we are handling all the exceptions, and this is how you have to implement a class. Now, the remaining two steps we'll see in the next part of the video. Uh, so do subscribe and do watch the second video. Thank you so much.